mean, the whole trial was enveloped in controversy. I mean, we have to remember that this was the first international criminal court in human history. And in certain respects, not only were the 21 individual defendants on trial, but law itself was on trial. That is, to the extent that the Allies had committed to doing a trial program as opposed to summary education, they really had to demonstrate that law was an adequate tool for dealing with crimes of this magnitude. And so they wanted to certainly make sure that whatever charges were brought against these uh, defendants, that they had adequate grounding in international law. Now, that said, I think we need to bear in mind that the Nuremberg trial, that famous one before the International Tribunal, was not in the first instance a Holocaust trial. Right. Um, as you mentioned, the, the principal charge that was brought against the defendants at Nuremberg was that they had waged an aggressive war in violation of international law. And that charge of waging an aggressive war, that has not showed a lot of durability uh, since Nuremberg, and even at the time, it was very much enveloped in controversy. Andy used the term victor's justice, and victor's justice was most particularly applied to the charge of waging an aggressive war because the question emerged, since when in human history was waging war a crime? It might be something we don't like, it might be something we disagree with, but since when was it a crime? Mm -hmm. The other charges that were brought, war crimes, war crimes was pretty well established in international law, and then crimes against humanity, in my mind, was the most distinctive contribution uh, that Nuremberg made. Uh, it was through the channel of this relatively new thing called crimes against humanity that most of the evidence of the crimes of the Holocaust entered the Nuremberg trial. And I think we can say now with 70 plus years of hindsight that crimes against humanity was the most distinctive and important legal breakthrough of the Nuremberg trial. Mm -hmm. And crimes against humanity in included what kinds of action? It basically included what we can describe as extermination, systematic attacks on a, on a civilian population. We have to remember that um, genocide, which is I think a term that we all would use today to describe uh, the Nazis' exterminatory practices, genocide was only coined yeah. as a term in 1944, a year before the trial started. It was coined by uh, Ralphia Lemkin, who of course was a um, legal advisor, Polish Jewish legal advisor to the US War Department. And so even though today genocide stands as an independent crime in international law, at the time of Nuremberg, it was still very much a very new term. Mm -hmm. And it does emerge in the trial itself. If you look per in particular at the closing arguments of the prosecutors, they start to use this new term but that new term of genocide is basically used as a description right. of the Nazis' crimes against humanity. 